Servus and welcome to Flo's German kitchen. I'm Flo and this is, well, obviously not my kitchen. It is my garden and it looks so beautiful that I just wanted to show you what it's like. So you see, there is no better time for me to continue my German Christmas menu. And another great thing about snow is it cools your beer for free. So cheers on snow. Wunderbar. I'll go to my kitchen and see you there. So here we are back to my nice and cozy kitchen and today we're going to continue the Christmas menu. In the last video we had Rotkraut, red cabbage, wonderful recipe. If you want to watch that, click here. And today we're going to continue with Rolladen, German beef rolls and Kartoffelknödel, potato dumplings. We start with the Rolladen and there is quite a lot of stuff we need for that. First, of course, uh, the meat that is cut from the beef top side, cut pretty thin. Um, we need bacon. We have uh, pickles, mustard, lots of onions, salt, pepper, and some vegetable. This is celery, this is leek, this is carrot. We need uh, tomato puree, this is port wine, this is red wine, this is beef stock. And of course what we need is a nice snow chilled German beer. Ah, wunderbar. Let's start with the meat. This is really nice beef cut thinly already, but I want to extend it a little. So I give it a few more whacks with my meat tenderizer. I take the flat side. And I don't hit it hard, just nicely. To flatten it out a little more. The first thing you do is to spread mustard. This can be any kind of standard mustard, nothing special is needed. Rouladen is a very down-to-earth German comfort food, no fancy stuff needed. Next I use pickles. I forgot to cut these. I take a quarter of them. I know that there are discussions. Some people don't like pickles in the Rouladen, but I think it's really something that makes the Rouladen a very special recipe. So I definitely put in pickles, no Rouladen without for me. Uh, what I forgot is salt and pepper. This can be used very generously and also I like pepper so I take quite a lot. There is different ways of rolling the roulade. Um, what you can do is either you take a, a big chunk, a big stripe about the size of the pickle of uh, bacon and also take big chunks of onion and just roll everything in the middle of the roulade. Um, what I prefer is to spread things a little. So what I have is bacon slices. That I just lay out here. And also I have a bit finer cut onions and also just roll it in. I think personally that loosens up the whole thing if there is still a layer of bacon and onions uh, within the roll. But it's a matter of personal taste. A lot of people will say, no, we need big chunks. We need this, we need that. Um, what helps to keep the roulade in shape is to flip over the sides and then you just roll it. Rolling, 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 
rolling the rolladen. So I got myself a toothpick and you use the toothpicks just to pin the ends together. So this is a wonderful roulade, a real beauty. I'll make another one. Mustard again. Again, lots of bacon. Now you don't have to make a decision. There is a lot of ways of uh, rolling a roulade and you can do a combination. Like if you like, uh, bacon very much. You can take a big chunk of bacon in the middle and put slices alongside. Uh, same goes with onions. You can take a big chunk of onion in the middle and spread more of them in the roulade. So just try out and find out what you like. That's the best thing you can do because cooking is always an individual thing. It's something that you try and find out what suits your taste best. Speaking about variations, uh, some of them might be a result of cooking creativity, but probably some are born of uh, sheer necessity. I realized I miscounted my slices of bacon. So what I will do now is that I'll just spread bacon bits on the roulade. Probably that will even loosen up the whole thing more and add such a lot of bacon. It must turn out great, I'm sure. Oh yes, this is definitely a bigger chunk and I might probably like that, like that very, very much. So the last one's done. I mean, these guys are a real beauty, aren't they? So I put them aside, set up my stove and then we start cooking. If you're a thorough observer of my videos, you'd already have realized that this is not the stove I usually use and uh, that's got to do with the screw up in my last video where I got some Rotkraut burned. If you haven't seen it, click here. Um, and I realized it was not only my fault, but it was also due to lousy quality of the stove I had. It was only heating the center of the whole area about this size and that is one reason why the kraut got burned in the middle of the pot. So this is new. This is a uh, high quality German manufactory. The only sad thing is I can't give you a link for that because I don't know any source where to buy it in the US. But I got it. I'm happy with it. Maybe you find something similar. So let's start cooking. This is already heating up well. I take some vegetable oil. Let's fry the rouladen. What I want now is to really let the meat develop its roast flavors. So get it brown on every side. That means I really turn it 90 degrees. 90 degrees. 90 degrees. So that it gets brown and roasty on each side. Now these guys look really good. I take them out of the pan. And immediately
throw in all the vegetable. You see, I took a lot of onions earlier for the rouladen because I knew I would put the rest in the sauce. And also pickles, somebody, some like it, some not. I throw them in, it's gonna be pureed anyway later. And it gives that special flavor that you know from the rouladen. So I love putting in the pickles to the sauce. And I didn't chop them in little pieces, also not uh, all the vegetable because it's gonna be pureed later. And so it doesn't matter what size it's chopped in. And don't worry about the brown on the, on the bottom of the pan. This will loosen after deglazing it and that will give your sauce a wonderful savory flavor. Next thing I, I do is, in German it's called tomatisieren. I have no idea if there is an English expression for that. You roast the tomato puree for one purpose, that's to give the sauce a darker color, but also the roasting takes out some of the bitter aromas of the tomato puree. So now this is getting really dark, I think it's time to deglaze. Uh, I start with the port wine for no special reason. You can take the red wine, you could take the beef stock, but for me it's kind of routine to start with the pot. And you can already see the brown cover of the bottom of the pan has already dissolved and now adds the flavor to the sauce. And here I go with the red wine and the beef stock. You take enough beef stock so that if you put in the rouladen again, they will be almost fully covered. They're not supposed to float, but they should be well covered with the sauce because they're gonna be braising for let's say one and a half to two hours depending on the size. So let's put these guys back to where they belong. Enjoy your time in the hot tub. I put this uh, on the stove behind me and we'll immediately go on with preparing the Kartoffelknödel, the potato dumplings. So let's make Kartoffelknödel. We need 600 grams of potatoes for that. We need two yolks. We need 50 grams of starch. These are 30 grams of butter. They need to melt. So I use the potato water simply because it's a smart thing to do. I guess the rest will work outside of the pot anyway and as always when using potatoes quite a lot of salt. I start the whole thing with peeling the potatoes. There are different variations of Kartoffelknödel. Uh, the one I'm doing today is a pretty simple one as I'm doing the rouladen at the same time. Um, it's made with 100% cooked potatoes. There is other variations that work with half raw, half cooked potatoes. Uh, there is even the Thuringian version that will use uh, two thirds of raw potatoes, one third of cooked potatoes. I might be doing another knödel video where I show all these variations, but for now this will do. I peel the potatoes and cut them in decent pieces just so 
they don't take too long to cook. Be careful not to be splashed with hot water. It's painful. Mom! Get his being a dildo! The potatoes have been cooking for 15 minutes now. That's why I'm going to strain them and then we'll see what to do next. If the dough for the dumpling is too moist, they might not have enough cohesion and they can fall apart when uh, being cooked. So I give the potatoes some rest just that some of the water evaporates and the dough gets a bit drier. Now these potatoes feel a lot drier already. Next step is to mash them. For that I'm going to use my Spätzle press. Yeah, that feels just perfect. Not very sticky, pretty dry. That's just what you want. I've just cleared up a bit so you can see what I'm doing. Next step is to mix the potatoes and the egg yolks. And an important thing is that with every step you do, there are going to be more steps, uh, you really make sure that everything is mixed well. You want a really smooth, homogeneous uh, dough. <laughs> I wonder if that's correct. Um, and uh, for that, really mix the ingredients well before you add the next ones. Now you can see with the egg yolk, this is getting a bit sticky. But the next step is the starch. So the starch is for the stability, the egg is for the cohesion, and later on the butter will be for the smoothness and of course the taste. What I've forgotten is to add some salt. And for those of you who like it, you can add a little nutmeg. I'm very careful with nutmeg because the moment it's overdosed, I don't like it at all. But if it's just a little pinch, it's a nice thing to have. Now this is getting much sturdier, drier and already in a good condition to be shaped, but we're not yet done because we want to smoothen things up with the liquid butter. Mmm, that's gonna be great. That's going to be great. Yeah, this is this is really wonderful. I can I can smell the butter. And that just makes things a bit more sophisticated, I would say. Now this is a really really smooth dough and I'm pretty sure this is going to taste wonderful. There is two important things about cooking knödel. One is that they have enough space to float freely. That's why I took a bigger pot for that. And the other thing is that they're not supposed to boil. The water should be just below boiling temperature uh, so that the knödel don't fall apart. And now we are back to variations. Um, there is many shapes and sizes of knödel in Germany and you can go up to the, the size of a big orange, but also some people serve knödel uh, who got the size of a, of a golf ball. I personally like the size of something in between a golf ball and an orange. So this is my perfect size. Let's put them in carefully. 
and roll the next one. And when you roll the knödel, the dumplings, on one hand you want them to be compact, but you don't want them too dense so that they don't get hard when you eat them. They are supposed to be soft and fluffy. So this is a question of the, yeah, the right touch for knödel. He's got the knödel touch. Yeah, it seems I've done everything right. Five knödel for five rouladen, just perfect. So for this size of knödel, I think 15 to 20 minutes will be perfect. But the good thing is, the moment they are done, they start really floating on the surface. So you will always know. As you can see, the knödels, they are a floating. Time to get them out of the pot and take care of the rouladen. The rouladen are definitely fully cooked through. They look wonderful. So let's finalize this, the gravy. So to finish the gravy, the next thing I'm going to do is to blend it. I don't want to do that in the pot. That's why I fill it in some other high bowl vessel. And I'll do that over the sink just so I don't create too much of a mess. So the next thing I do is that I strain the sauce back to its pot because I don't want to have pieces of vegetable in the sauce. I really want it to be, yeah, just a smooth, savory gravy. That's something that needs a little patience. But as you know, the essence of all cooking is a good gravy. So this took a while, there is not a lot left, but that's what I don't want to have in the sauce. So that goes away. Now we are reaching the finish line. The sauce has uh, reduced quite a lot. And for the rest, I will use my mixture of starch and port wine. I'm always a bit careful with that because I don't want the sauce to be too thick. But honestly, in most of the times, in the end, I pour in everything and it's just the right amount. Let's see how it works out this time. You can see the sauce thickens. Yeah, this will do. I put back the rouladen. I get myself a knödel, actually I put them back for a couple of minutes because I took them out too early and I don't want to eat them cold. So I'll put everything on a plate and see you in a minute. Now guys, isn't that a beauty? Lots of gravy, that's very important for me. I heated up some of the kraut that I kept from the last video. And yeah, can't wait to try that. Let's start with the knödel. Mm, see that? That's such a fine texture. Oh, wonderful. 
<lacht> ja, der Knödel ist great. Now, let's get to the meat. One important thing, especially when you have guests, don't forget to take out the toothpick. Now, let's see. Oh, can you see what, how soft that is? It really falls apart. Yeah, yeah. This is lovely. This is the perfect combination for Christmas. And it's the perfect combination for every other day. This is just wunderbar. I really love it. That's my German Christmas menu. It's a perfect combination of that meaty, savory roulade and gravy, the sweet, sour uh, red cabbage, and this nice, fluffy little potato dumplings. This is really great. I love it. You will love it if you cook it at home. And that's what I recommend. Cook your stuff at home. Enjoy German cooking. Cheers on German cooking. Cheers on Rouladen. Ah. Wunderbar and Merry Christmas to all of you.